spent the majority of last year traveling around the Midwest talking to people about tampons. And people gave me trophies for it. <laughs> uh, when I was an undergrad, I competed for the Ball State University speech team, and I found the majority of my success in an event called After Dinner Speaking, or ADS. And this is an event in which you essentially give a persuasive speech, but you get to make some jokes, so lighthearted and uh, the envy of all. <laughs> now, on August 8th, 2014, Guardian writer and self-proclaimed feminist killjoy, Jessica Valenti, tweeted a question out to her Twitter followers uh, for a piece that she was working on for The Guardian. And it said, anyone know a country where tampons are free or somehow subsidized? Now, Jessica got a lot of insightful feedback from her followers, but even more nasty backlash, as is typical when a woman decides she wants to open her mouth on the internet these days. <laughs> and so I was watching all of this unfold, and uh, I had a couple thoughts. The first is, why is Jessica Valenti worried about free tampons? The second, are there places where tampons are free? And the third, why are people being so awful to her for asking this question? So I started to do some research, and I wrote an ADS, essentially about the politicization of menstruation and menstrual products. And I won two national championship titles uh, with that speech for collegiate speaking, which was super affirming to someone like me who gives speeches for fun in her free time. <laughs> uh, but more importantly, uh, when the speech season was over, I found myself still caring about, uh, about this issue. Uh, about the politicization of menstruation products and menstruation. And that's because of an excerpt from one of the sources I found when I was doing my research. And this comes from Jezebel of March 27, 2014. Periods are a site of major human rights issues, health nightmares, economic disenfranchisement, and violent sexual shame. So today, I want to invite you to come along with me on this journey wherein I talk to you about tampons and periods because we need to pay attention to things like these because 52% of the world's population experiences menstruation, and I think, as you'll see, uh, menstruation is a site of oppression uh, for many of these women. So first off, uh, why is Jessica Valenti talking about free tampons? Well, in my research, I found that it's because menstrual products are really, really expensive. Now, for those of you in the room who don't have a period, who don't menstruate, stick with me, or we're gonna talk this through. <laughs> tampons, on average, cost $7 a box at roughly nine times a year. Pads cost $8 a box at about seven times a year. Now, the average woman menstruates for 40 years, which totals to $4,760 that a woman will spend on tampons and pads by the time she's 50. Now, in the US, women who are of low income status, right, of a low SES, cannot readily afford menstrual products because they cannot be purchased with food stamps. And across the globe, women are fighting to ax a menstrual product tax that ranges anywhere from 5% to 27% extra that women pay for tampons and pads. Why is this, you ask? Well, it's because menstrual products are considered luxury items. Uh, here are some other things that are considered luxury items. Beach houses, yachts, <laughs> and personal panty beds. So there's a discrepancy there. One of these things is not like the other. Right? <laughs> And this is a problem um, because when women can't afford menstrual products, they turn to more dangerous alternatives. Um, in the US, homeless shelters, hottest commodity uh, are menstrual products. They, they don't get enough tampons and pads donated to the women who live in, uh, in these homeless shelters. So what these women do is they sneak into restaurants and steal toilet paper to shove into their underwear uh, to supplement uh, for their lack of tampons or pads. And in developing nations, um, in even more serious circumstances, women use straw, corn cobs, and cow feces to stem the bleeding um, from their periods when they can't afford uh, menstrual products. These women will often skip school or miss work because they're ashamed. Uh, they contract infections, they get cervical cancer, and in the most uh, serious circumstances, these women die. Okay, so not only are we charging women grossly, for accessing menstrual products, but when they can't afford them, uh, we let them die. And this is happening in areas all over the world, but even here in arguably the most developed nation. Uh, so why do we live in this world, right? Why do we live in this world where women are dying, they can't afford menstrual products for a, a bodily function that occurs really, really naturally? Uh, that's because 
it's 2015 and we're still afraid of periods. Uh, now, you may not believe me, okay, but uh, I think a lot of you would agree that whenever you see a tampon or a pad or hear the word period, you put on the metaphorical earmuffs, right? La la la, no thank you, do not want to talk about, right? Um, when I was doing my research, I came across an article uh, posted on Total Fraternity Move. Uh, are we familiar with this? There's the hub of all things fraternity. Uh, and this article was called, BuzzFeed just made a period-related list that made me want to puke on my keyboard. Now, in this article, a frat guy named Rob Fox wrote about this article he read on BuzzFeed, uh, and the article was talking about an alternative to tampons and pads called the Deepa Cup. It's a menstrual cup that you insert into the vagina and it collects uh, menstrual blood. And then, very dramatically, and I quote, Rob puked on his keyboard, and then puked on his intern, and then yelled at his intern for not cleaning up his puke. Uh, and, and so, I, I think we would all agree, right, total fraternity move is not the pinnacle of quality journalism. <laughs> not arguing that. Um, but I will say that this article is really representative of our cultural attitude towards menstruation, uh, towards menstruation which is to deem it disgusting, uh, to demonize women uh, for having periods. Uh, he called the diva cup a demon <clears throat> goblet in the article. <laughs> really pointing at Rob, good one. <laughs> um, but it's part of this larger cultural narrative of the way we talk about menstruation and menstrual products, uh, which is really, really problematic and very disheartening for people like me who have a period and need uh, alternative methods sometimes uh, when they can't uh, afford uh, tampons and pads. Uh, so what do we do now, right? This becomes the question. What do we do now? We know we live in this world where women are overcharged for menstrual products. Uh, women suffer serious health consequences when they can't get menstrual products. We live in this world where people are afraid to talk about periods. So how do we fix this? What do we do? The first thing uh, is that menstrual products need to be accessible to all women all the time. Uh, it's a given, duh, right? <laughs> women need menstrual products. Um, some, uh, some scholars would argue we need to subsidize menstrual products. Uh, we need to push for innovations to lower the cost of menstrual products. Um, but in my opinion, that's not good enough. In my opinion, menstrual products need to be completely and totally free. Okay, menstruation is not a luxury. It's a bodily function uh, that can have severe health consequences. And we need to start treating it like one. Uh, if you need to pee, right, you need to use the bathroom, your place of work, your school, uh, the restaurant you're in provides you with toilet paper for free when you need to take care of this very necessary bodily function, right? And so it doesn't make sense uh, because we're not expected to carry toilet paper with us wherever we go in this world. But women are still expected to provide themselves with tampons and pads for a natural, normal bodily function. Um, I started graduate school here at Ball State uh, in the fall, and I've made it my personal goal uh, before I graduate uh, next year uh, to assure that women on this campus get free menstrual products. There are other universities in Indiana that do it. Butler University, I know off the top of my head, provides its students with free menstrual products. There's no reason why universities um, and, and really just facilities everywhere shouldn't be providing women with uh, free menstrual products. So, I encourage you to join me uh, to push uh, for this change because I cannot for the life of me figure out why anyone could walk into our health center on this campus right now and grab a handful of condoms completely free, but women still have to pay to hygienically manage their periods. So I encourage you all to help me as I move forward in this endeavor. Uh, the other thing we need to do before we can even make menstrual products free and, and, and arguably the most important thing we have to do is that we have to break the menstruation taboo. We need to dialogue about menstruation by, because talking about it is how we enact change on a global level. Um, and there are women all over the world who are setting awesome, awesome examples for people who want to speak out about menstruation. Um, Artist, a Canadian artist named Rupi Kaur uh, battled and beat Instagram last year after they removed her period stain photo. Uh, a woman in the UK free bled on the steps of parliament last week to protest the 5% menstrual product tax that they have in the UK. And uh, an activist in Germany, her name is Elona, uh, writes feminist messages on pads and posts them up all over her city in Germany. 
and these women, uh, these really awesome, badass women who I just want to be like every day of my life, um, inspire me and hopefully inspire you to sort of speak out and get the dialogue uh, started about menstruation. Um, because the menstruation taboo is sexist. And if you cringe when you look at a period or a tampon or hear the word uh, period, right, uh, I invite you to grow up. <laughs> because you're part of the problem and we can only make women's reproductive health a priority when we get past the menstruation taboo and we talk about the things